Welcome back. We're going to begin the measure phase with a discussion on a couple of concepts that become a little more clear after we come out of the exploratory data analysis. The first of these is the idea of profound knowledge. This goes back to the 1930s and the work of Walter Schuhart. Schuhart, in his 1939 book on statistical method from the viewpoint of quality control, made the following comment. He said, hindsight supplements a view foresight. A backward look often adds materially to a view forward. What are we trying to accomplish in work? We want to study what has been happening in the past in order to predict the future and control it and create a predictable outcome. So what we see is Schuhart's work was focusing on what I, I call a theory of control. How do we manage the events in the past and use them differently to learn about what to do in the future? And so the idea of the theory of control is supporting a theory of prediction or foresight. And in order to move from hindsight to foresight, we go through a process called insight. Insight was described as the Schuhart cycle, specification, production, inspection. This is the idea of plan, do, and see, or think about what we need to change, a reflective process. And if we think about how we want to manage, what we see is that hindsight is actually part of a realm of history. We're studying what happened. Foresight is the realm of science. We want to predict with some probability what's going to happen in the future. Insight is about the realm of psychology, interpreting the things that we see and then understanding how we make the best decisions about them that will carry us forward. And so what's happening in this insight period, it's actually what I call a Bayesian moment. It's a moment of transition from the past information that we have to predicting conditioned on that knowledge a future state. This is the idea of a system of profound knowledge, which was introduced as a concept by Deming. Deming introduced this concept in 1993 in his book, The New Economics. But he only outlined the idea, and he never gave a theoretical justification for his belief that there was such a thing as a system of profound knowledge. In fact, he never defined profound knowledge. So what I'd like to do is offer a definition for this concept of profound knowledge. What we mean by this is statistical understanding of real-world process behavior so that its future states may be predicted with some degree of probability. Now, if that's true, we can take the four elements that Deming proposed for the system of profound knowledge and structure them just a little bit differently. The first is the idea of systems or the structure of systems. We have to understand the system in which work is being done and also in which decisions are being made. So this we sometimes will call process management. We also see that we have to have statistical thinking about the process variation. We see the variation happening, and the knowledge of the system comes from the study of that performance variation. Improvement requires that we control the variation to create the states that we would like to repeat in the future. And sometimes we identify this as what we would call statistical thinking. The development of knowledge is a third component. So knowledge comes by observing work, defining a theory, testing that theory, and confirming it in the real world. To have that done, we have to have a sound measurement system. The final component of this system of profound knowledge, or theory of profound knowledge, deals with the psychological impact. Human behavior has to be understood. We have to motivate people. We have to coordinate their work. And as a result, we need to create a collaborative culture among the people in the organization so that the human energy can be focused in a singular direction. When we take a look at those things, we say, OK, if that's what we do and that's the system in which we're working, how do we distinguish and make this scientific? To distinguish profound knowledge, we have to define its opposite. And I describe its opposite as profane knowledge. So profane knowledge is common. Profound knowledge is unusual. So profane knowledge, it's linear in nature. We think yesterday was just like today. It's focused on measuring averages. It ignores the human factors. It's using enumerative uh, data, so it's looking at all of the data once. It's based on tribal lore. We've always done it this way. And also, it's using common sense to define its parameters. In some sense, it's sort of mindless reflection. We don't really think about doing something new. We just think about doing something. And in that case, it becomes reactive, focusing on rapid decisions 
without really trying to understand the reason for moving forward. Profound knowledge is just the opposite in each of those dimensions. Instead of linear, it's systemic. It can be dynamic. Instead of focusing on averages, it's managing the variation. It's using human nature and understanding how do we build collaborative systems. It has a time history or an analytic use of the data, and it's backed by science rather than tribal lore. It's also based on uncommon logic, drilling down to understand what really are the causal relationships that are hidden in the data. As a result, rather than being mindless, it's mindful. We have to think in a very great way, in a dynamic way, about how these ideas are put together into a system. And also, it's deliberative actions based on a logical structure. So why do we want to pursue profound knowledge as a development process? Well, this provides us the mindset that allows us to see more clearly what must be changed in order to make hard choices about process development. So what we're going to do is, as we move into the Demaic process, we are, going to, we are actually in the pursuit of profound knowledge. We want to develop a mindset for this pursuit, as well as an operational philosophy for interpreting the observations we have. So we're going to go look at the nature of the actual entity, the things we see, and what defines the process reality that's going on. This is why we go and see, genichi kambutsu, go to the gemba. We also see that this understanding is achieved through a structured inquiry process and trying to understand the essential nature of profound knowledge. And that's what the rest of our Demaic process is going to do. Step by step, sequentially, it's going to take us through a structured inquiry to discover what are the sources of variation, how can they be changed, and then how can we structure those sources in a different way, reconfigure them, so that we can actually get the end state that we would like to have in terms of a predictive outcome. So profound knowledge is a very important thing. And we see, looking at these four components, elements that will be part of the solution state that we have for any process improvement that we're going to be undertaking. So let's come back and we'll take a look at another aspect of the background information.